Hello everyone, happy April. This is Amy. Welcome to our channel. Today I want to share with you three no-cost DIYs that will help bring spring to your home. I'm also going to tell you a little bit about our nonprofit organization called From This Day Forward. I hope you enjoy it. Hello, I'm Amy Moser, one of the founders of From This Day Forward, a wedding and events ministry. And I'm Heather Krempel, her most favoriteest daughter in the world. And we are a mother-daughter duo that has created this nonprofit organization called From This Day Forward. I don't know what we're here to say, but... <laughs> we're here to give hope. Yes, we're here, um, you know... People say wedding and events ministry, what, what is that? What does that mean? And we're still working on that definition because from our research, we have found there is nothing like us. <laughs> not anything particularly that that is exactly like what we do. We do kind of a lot of different things. And so we're here to share all the different things that we do here. It's not just weddings. It's not just events, but we also provide education and hope and um, encouragement. guidance, encouragement, and, and building healthy relationships between individuals that ultimately can lead to building a healthier and more stable family, which would be perfect for our community, and especially in this crazy, crazy time right now. We are volunteer base. No one gets paid here. No, no, no one gets paid here. <laughs> oh. and so we started out doing this for fun. We wanted to honor commitments because we believe that marriage and the commitment of marriage and the love that you have for one another is so important. It is the foundation of a brand new family. You're coming together, you're building a family, and we want to strengthen that family. So now I want to move right on into our DIYs. For the first DIY, we are going to make this adorable Easter topiary made out of cupcake liners. So for this project, you're going to need some cupcake liners, which I happen to find in my baking cabinet. Then I found some napkins left over from last year. I found some styrofoam that came out of a box of, I don't know, something that we bought. And in our gift wrap stash, I used some of that filler that you would use in maybe a gift bag. And I used an old egg carton. I also used one of my old candles. It was almost gone anyway, so I melted it and cleaned out the jar and it worked perfectly. And of course you're gonna to need to use a glue gun, scissors. Now I didn't really use the Mod Podge or the brush. Um, I did something a little easier. Here are some of the flowers that I already made and they were really starting to turn out really nice. So after I laid my cupcake liners out flat, I folded it in half once, and then I folded it in half again, and then I folded it in half again. And then I was thinking of maybe a carnation in my mind, and so I thought, well, if I cut it, I would get that texture like um, a carnation flower. So that is what I did. I cut the edge maybe about an inch down. I didn't want to cut all the way to the end. Obviously I would probably cut too much off. Then I unfolded it and flattened it out again. Then I separated them and kind of turned them a little so that um, it would give that a little more realistic look. And I used the bottom of my paintbrush um, just to find the center and to kind of help me pinch everything together and then I would 
twists at the very bottom and that pretty much held everything together. After I did that, I fluffed them out and we have a pretty nice flower. So I did, with the, did this with several colors and then I happen to have a green one in my stash. Um, you could just use green color paper, you could take a crayon and just color some paper. I want you to use whatever you already have. And I folded it pretty small. And then I took my scissors and I just eyeballed what I thought maybe a leaf would look like. And so I cut out some leaves from my cupcake liner. I think the green really added to the flower, made it look a little more realistic. Next, I took my egg carton and cut the lid off. And then I cut, I don't know why I cut four. I could have just cut two of the um, areas where the eggs go. And then I'm going to be taking hot glue and gluing the two ends together. just like that. You do need to be pretty careful. The hot glue does kind of melt the styrofoam egg carton and you don't really want to get that on your finger. This is actually going to be working like a base so that you can glue all of your flowers on. I can't remember how many flowers I made. Uh, it's just really your preference how full you would like your topiary to look. So I also then took my stick from my yard and we had lots of sticks right now since spring is here and it's about time to clean our yard up. Um, and I glued the egg carton on uh, the two little sections of egg carton up onto the top of the stick. So now I'm going to take my carnations and I'm going to be gluing them onto the egg cartons. I found that if you fold it over the bottom where you pinched it, it stays on the glue much better. I just want to take a moment to ask you to please subscribe to our channel. You will be helping more than just us. Our nonprofit helps a lot of people who are in situations where they can't afford to have weddings or their special events. Uh, we also have an outreach into our community for another, uh, for a lot of different ways that we do that. But that will be another video. We'll explain a little bit more. Um, but we are so thankful that you are watching our video and we hope that you enjoy these crafts and that they will bring a lot of joy to you and your family during this very difficult time in our world. So you just continue to glue your flowers. I did one side and then I uh, turned it and glued a flower onto the other side. Um, I, it just helped make it a little more symmetrical and I did that all the way around until I used up all my flowers.
So now I'm taking that glass base that used to be a candle and our leftover napkins from last year. I was pretty excited because they looked very springy. And what I actually did, um, I went ahead and measured about the height of the glass jar and then I just trimmed some of that off. And in my original plan, I was going to actually uh, Mod Podge this on, but then I decided, hey, I could put it right inside the jar and not have to glue anything. And then if you want, you can actually reuse this jar another time for another project if you like. So now I'm taking that styrofoam that I found that was just packaging from something we bought. I really don't even remember what it was. Um, and I'm putting that inside. I actually did glue that. I must not have filmed that, but um, I glued it down to the base because I didn't want the whole top of the topiary to fall apart. And I actually filmed this before I um, put the top on. So here it is. I love it. I hope you do. Um, I don't know if my son was that impressed, but I know that everybody else I showed it to thought it was pretty neat and I thought it looked really nice on the table. So for my next project, we're going to be making a little sock bunny and you need um, just an old sock and some hair bands and I did have some stuffing that um, we're going to use and then for his tail, I just used a little cotton ball. So first thing you're going to be putting um, the stuffing into the sock and you can decide how full you want it. I made mine kind of full, kind of a fat little bunny. He's healthy. <laughs> um, once you get it stuffed to where you want it, then you just take one of your hair bands and I just wrapped it around and we're basically separating the body from the head. And that's what I'm doing right there. And then I was kind of fluffing it as I went. Okay, so next we're going to separate the head from the ears and we're just gonna use another hair band. My hair bands were getting pretty yucky as far as the elastic was starting to go out of them and I did disinfect them before I used them. I washed my sock and I disinfected. I'm really in the disinfectant mood these days. Um, but it's still, the elastic was kind of going bad on it. So I had to wrap it around quite a few times. So now I felt like the top um, where his ears are going to be was a little long, so I trimmed that off. And now I'm going to cut down the middle of that top area that's going to be the ears, and that will separate your two ears. So it was looking a little floppy and a, uh, not really the shape I wanted. So I kind of eyeballed it and um, trimmed some more off so it looked more like ears. Okay, once I was happy with the shape, I decided that we need to make it a little more 3D looking. So I used my hot glue and rolled the edges and then just glued them to secure them. Again, you wanna be very careful with your hot glue. Um, I probably should have used some finger protectors, but it worked out well. The next thing I did, I couldn't think of what I wanted to use for the eyes and nose. I tried a marker, it didn't work so well. So I found some twine that I had laying around the house and I just tied knots. So his eyes are made out of knots and his little nose 
is also made out of uh, the twine. As you can see, I did glue um, an old lid from a pickle jar to the bottom because it kept falling over. So I thought um, I would use something, just recycle it, and it worked great. He stands up very well. I guess it's going to be a she because later on I do put a bow on her and I also embellish her head with some flowers. So here I am putting on the little nose and I actually um, like him to, like her, to be a little happier. So I glued it so that the little twine sort of made a smile. I don't know if bunnies really smile, but in my world they do. So I'm recycling again from a jar that I had used for my granddaughter's birthday. I borrowed the bow and I decided a beautiful pink lace bow would be just what this little bunny needed. All I did was tie it like you would your shoes. So here she is, and there you can see, I didn't uh, record putting the flowers on the top, but there she is already on the Easter table that I prepared. And I just think she's beautiful. Okay, so next up, we are going to be making a really cute, I don't know if you'd call it a sign. It's just, it'll say Easter when it's all done. And I just am recycling some Easter eggs that I had left over from probably when my children were little. And I'm taking the base. Uh, the base is just made of half of an egg and then I took a complete egg and just glued it right on top. And I'm showing you that you want the little tab to go into the back. It's just a little easier. We're gonna be writing on the egg later. You can use as many eggs as you like. I wanted to spell out the word Easter, so I ended up using six eggs, and there they are. Now, originally, I was trying to use a white chalk marker, I thought, to write the word, a letter on each egg, and there it is with a white chalk marker, and I didn't really like it. So later on, I actually washed that off, and I used a black glass marker that I got from Dollar Tree. And there it is. Um, I also put twine around the area where I glued them together and I added a little flower on top and I just love it. So here is the Easter table that I put together. I think it is so important for you and your family to sit together. It may not be the big celebration you would like to have, but just be home and be happy and be with your family. And I set the table showing, these are just recycled items that were around the house. And it really brought a lot of joy. I used some more of those leftover napkins as a placemat. And then I put another one under the um, first plate, the salad plate. And of course, you always need your fork on the left and your knife and your spoon on the right. I had to do a demonstration when I was a kid um, in 4-H. And so now I always remember how to set a table. But I just think it's beautiful. I think it will bring a lot of joy to your family, um, not only during the process of making this, but when you sit down and actually have your Easter dinner together.